Today on CCX News, could grocery shoppers actually see some good news? For the first time in years, signs that food prices are leveling off. What we're seeing at local grocery stores. With the holidays approaching, food prices are a common concern. As Kevin Miller reports, experts are hopeful that lower prices are coming in the future. At Dean's Supermarket in downtown Osseo, How are you today, sir? John Perel says a $20 bill isn't going as far as it used to. We've got apples, oranges, and bananas, and that seems to be pretty expensive you know, wherever you go. He's one of the many customers that Dean's manager, Trisha Bishman, says are tired of high prices. We definitely get people saying that uh, prices have gone up quite a bit. A lot of them maybe double. You know, they just don't get as much for their money. Yeah, we get that a lot. Bishman says their suppliers started raising prices in 2022. I feel like prices have kind of stabilized since then. Um, we're still seeing certain items go up, like eggs and pop seems to be one that gone up and up. Those increases are not always something deans can control. We're definitely not price gouging. You know, it's not anything that we're doing. You know, I think all grocery stores are in the same boat, you know. For some families, high prices in the grocery aisles mean cutting back. Now it's more like the needs instead of like the, the wants, you know. It's, it's, it's really hard. But experts say there's hope that price tags will drop. The Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis says grocery inflation is down from its 2022 peak. In fact, it's almost back to pre-pandemic levels. The Adobe Price Index also says online grocery costs had their first drop in four years. And while those changes haven't shown up locally, customers like John are hopeful that a lower cost in the checkout line is on the horizon. Uh, Yeah, I look forward to something new, (laughs) like a little better deal. In Osseo, Kevin Miller, CCX News. The Federal Reserve says a surge in commodity prices helped drive increases in grocery costs. Rising wages for workers were also a factor. A slew of new homes are being built in northwest Maple Grove, but there's one particular home that will soon be under construction that is different than the rest. This weekend, we get to see what sets this home apart. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here today. New home construction doesn't normally generate much fanfare, but this isn't just a normal home build. We gather for events like these in an effort to further the life-saving mission of St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Wednesday morning, dozens gathered in Northwest Maple Grove to celebrate a construction project based on hope and above all else, generosity. All of the suppliers and all of our subcontractors they're going to be donating time, donating materials, the developer uh, donating you know, a portion of the land. Um, it's such a great team effort, and we're really, really honored, really excited about that. Andover-based Hanson Builders partnered with St. Jude Children's Research Hospital on a program to build what will be Minnesota's first St. Jude Dream Home Showplace. We find a builder who gets the lot donated and works with local vendors to get as much of the materials donated as possible. And then they sell the home on the open market and then the net proceeds go to support the children at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. This home, which should be complete next year, is estimated to sell on the open market for $1.6 million. The money will help ensure that a child diagnosed with pediatric cancer never receives a bill for treatment, travel, housing, or food. It's a symbol of hope. It's a symbol of community members coming together to make a real difference for children battling cancer and other life-threatening diseases. As a Maple Grove Council member, it fills me with pride to see this incredible project coming to life in our city. An incredible project that's fitting as we enter the season of giving. It says a lot to their support and their commitment to supporting causes like this. So we're just incredibly grateful. Construction of the home should be complete by September. It will then be showcased in the 2025 Fall Parade of Homes. You may have heard of a little free library. Well, how about a free little art gallery? Emily Haugen explains how a Plymouth woman is sharing her love of art with her neighbors. Sometimes a little inspiration yeah. is just around the corner. It's a really pretty simple. Teodora Poganot is the curator of a free little art gallery. The entire premise is 
take a little art, give a little art, take a little supplies, give a little supplies. Her family moved here just last year and was looking for ways to spread her love of art in her own way. I just really wanted something in our new home to kind of like celebrate it and bring the community together. This little library is a home to art and supplies of all kinds from anyone who drops them off. Some of the works are from neighborhood kids, others from professional artists. I have donations from Massachusetts and Texas and even from some that will be coming in from Florida soon. Poganat says since its installation, her neighbors have helped to keep the gallery alive by picking up and dropping off pieces of their own. There have been so many donations of art supplies, markers, watercolors, paintings, crafts. Though Poganat's property is quiet on a Thursday afternoon, you can see remnants of the joy chalked on the side of the box. Poganat says the neighbor kids love to create on the side of the road. Every once in a while, like, I'll come out getting ready to go to work and I'll hear their little giggles because they're waiting at the bus stop. And it, it just makes me so happy to hear, to hear and see other people so incredibly happy over this. And she doesn't plan on stopping anytime soon. It's actually been an absolute voracious consumption of this art and I'm so happy. You can find this gallery at the corner of Windermere Curve and Pine View Lane North. There are also nearly 600 free little art galleries across the world, but this is the first in the West Metro. We had a strong boys soccer season in the area this fall. Here's Jay Wilcox with the first of our fall all area teams. We'll start our all area boys soccer team with a strong group of defenders. Number one, senior Frank Miller of Maple Grove was a Mr. Soccer finalist and Star Tribune Minnesota Player of the Year. A great leader on and off the field and a fierce 1v1 defender, Miller also chipped in six goals and hit the game winning shootout goal in the section 5-3A final. Number five, senior Vincent Jacob helped Tatino Grace to a state runner-up finish in Class 2A. The all-Northwest Suburban pick excelled at the back end and also chipped in with two goals and five assists for the Eagles. Number three, Colin Ames quietly excelled for Maple Grove State 3A runner-up squad. The all-Northwest Suburban pick often drew the toughest defensive assignments and also had two goals and three assists for the Crimson. Number 19, Ali Ulama of Osseo was his team's defensive player of the year. All-Northwest Suburban Conference pick Lama had a goal and an assist while drawing the opponent's top forwards. Our goalkeeper is Brett Rexine of Wyzetta. The junior had 11 shutouts while earning All-Lake Conference status. A fearless keeper, Rexine led a new set of defenders from the back. Our midfielders include number 10, Jabari Kabisu, who had a great junior season for Totino Grace. The first team All-State and All-Midwest pick had 24 goals and 6 assists and was the engine for the Eagles offense. Also at mid, number 19, Jeremy Cordero of Wyzetta. The Trojans team MVP and a second team All-State pick, Cordero is equally good defensively and on the attack. Cordero had five goals and eight assists for the Trojans. Traffic in front. Number 10, Owen Hutto of Hopkins earned first team All-State honors as a senior. The Royals team MVP for offense, Hutto was a top three player in the Lake Conference and had seven goals and five assists. Number 11, Ilan Chaudhry helped Brack reach the state Class A tournament as a junior. A first team All-State and All-State tournament team pick, Chaudhry had a team high nine goals and 11 assists for the Mustangs. Number 10, Ike Duell of Maple Grove excelled on corner kicks and free kicks, wrapping up 12 assists to go along with five goals, including the game winner in the state semis. The senior was an All-State pick and was part of four straight Northwest Suburban title teams for the Crimson. Number seven, Sawyer Shelton of Hopkins excelled as a defensive midfielder as a senior. Shelton earned all Lake Conference honors and had four goals and four assists while helping the Royals to the Section 6-3A final. Number 10, Muhammad Abdul Rahman of Armstrong is an All-State and Star Tribune All-Minnesota player. He's one of the best playmakers in the state, posting nine goals and 10 assists for the Falcons. 
Our forwards include number seven, Kathima Sano of Champlain Park. The senior earned first team All-State honors and was Rebels offensive MVP. A dangerous attacker in all areas, Sano had 19 goals and eight assists. Number 18, John Fala of Osseo was the Orioles offensive player of the year and an All-State pick. An electrifying attacker, Fala had 22 goals and six assists for a good Orioles squad. Number seven, Moses Kamara helped Armstrong to an 11 win season. The first team All-State and Star Tribune All-Minnesota pick had an impressive 24 goals with four assists coming through in the clutch repeatedly. Number 17, Everett Johnston had a great junior season for state runner-up Maple Grove. Johnston had 15 goals and 10 assists to lead the Crimson in scoring and was an all-tournament team pick at state. Number 11, Josh Soke, seen here scoring last season, finished a great career for Heritage Christian Academy with a stellar senior season. The first team All-State pick had 22 goals and five assists. Number 10, Aiden Judicus of Wyzetta rounds out our squad. The senior was a first team All-State pick and had 12 goals and five assists and was one of the most dangerous attackers around. A great squad, the CCX All-Area Boys Soccer Team. These guys had great seasons too, the honorable mention picks for boys soccer.